up next is up here. Basically, what we have here is our mission log. It shows all the missions that we're supposed to do next. Like, we're supposed to meet up with Tov and Kev. He's right there. All mission people usually have an exclamation mark above their head. If not, you can usually find them in the circle. If you look at your little mini-map up here. So, you, you will have a list of things in here. The next, we're going to start up here. Your current time of day. What map you're on. Oh, we had somebody else join us. And in this map, you can change your map. Say, you change your instance. There's only one of these open with two current players in it. Me and the person in front of me. So, yeah, you can change your map. Say you're on a map and you're trying to do something and everybody else is trying to do that same thing. If you look at your map, there might only be two people on another map, like there is on this one. If there's 20 on one map and two people on the other, to do the mission, it's a lot easier to jump maps. Then we have our big map. And it shows the whole area of where you're at. So, moving on, we have our galaxy map, and it shows all the galaxy. Basically, we have Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Gamma, and they're color-coded, and those are different areas that you can go to. Every one of these is a planet, basically, that you can go to. All sorts of stuff out here. And when we get up into space, you will have a system list. And that lists all these different systems. So if you want to fly someplace, click on your system list. You can scroll down and say, I want to go to Dantu or wherever. You can also do that through your galaxy map when you're out in space. Say you're over here at Starbase 39 Sierra and you want to go over here to Brea. You cl double click Brea and you'll fly over there. Next up will be our character status. This, this screen shows our character, our bridge officers, which we have none yet, and our ship. It's not really our ship yet. We haven't been get given it yet. But it, this will be our very first ship. It is not the greatest ship, but it is very good for leveling and we will be talking about kit modules we don't have any because we just started we will be talking about kit frames later on we will be talking about body armor later on shields they give you a shield it's not a really good shield but they do give you a shield and different weapons as we get them and devices devices are everything from heels to tribbles to speed boots all kinds of things you can put here in devices. You're limited to four, so you kind of choose what you put in here very carefully. Same with the ship. We'll be talking about weapons. You got three weapons on this ship, a dual beam bank, a torpedo, and a turret. We'll talk about all the deflectors, impulse, singularities as we get them, um, shield arrays, devices for your ship, uh, different councils as we get them. If you notice, you have all kinds of stats over here. That's These will not show up correctly on the ground for space. But if we go over to Tara, they actually show up correctly because she is ground and she is on ground. We have a 2.5 crit chance and a 50% severity. Run speed of 13, which means if she runs... She runs at 13. You have all kinds of passives that you can get later on. Um, skills based ground stat. All this stuff comes in later on. Your biography. You can add a biography in other places. We'll discuss that in other places. But yeah, everything you ever wanted to know about stats on your character, it will be in here or in here on your ship. <coughs> Same defenses. Um... 
Same with attacks, tactical, base skills, science. Whole nine yards. Inertia. Inertia is if you try to stop, how far your ship moves before it stops. Or if you try to turn, how far your ship slides sideways. Flight speed, how fast you're going. Turn rate, how fast you can turn your ship. This isn't very good because it's a level one ship, of course. Next, we have skills. Skills, as we level, we get space skills, ground skills, and what we will be doing is filling out different ones in this as we go. You're only allowed so many skill points and you have to choose these very wisely. I run mainly tactical. I don't run all tactical, but I run mainly tactical. As we level, we will discuss this in more depth. Ground, my recommendation would be weapons and kit. That's how I like to play. I give everything to weapons and kit performance. There are people who will do endurance training and shield expert. Shield Expert is not the greatest in this game, but it does help a little bit of survivability. Endurance Training, Improved Endurance, Armor Master, these will help you survive if you really need to survive, have having issues surviving on ground. But for the most part, if you give more weapon proficiency, things die quickly. And kit performance. If you're running these two, things die very quickly. And if it's dead, it can't hurt you. Specializations, we don't have any specializations yet. I think they don't open till 50, I believe. I'm not positive of that, but I think specializations open at 50. Traits, we're gonna change our traits very shortly because the first thing that they give you is not really good traits at all. So we're gonna go through here and shut these off. The reason is, if you want to be able to do damage on ground or space, you got to have the right traits. Traits are a big chunk of DPS in this game. And you have personal ground traits, personal space traits, starship traits, which don't unlock till 50, space reputation traits, we'll get into that here in a little bit, ground reputation traits, and active reputation traits. None of these are available to us down here at starting off. But the personal space traits and personal ground traits are available. So my advice, seeing as how we don't have, we'll read through these real quick. Acute senses, perception and exploit damage. Res, resistances after flanking. Res is resistances. Increased damage and threat generation. Which isn't all bad. Assault training. That if you're going to wear run an assault weapon. I know this map will give me a pistol first. And then it will give me a rifle. So I don't have an assault weapon. So there's no point in using that. Cold blooded fire and plasma damage resistance. Well, I'm not worried about that right now. Covert stealth and exploit damage. I'm not really worried about that. Kit performance. I don't have a kit. Field Technician, Kit Readiness, I don't have a kit. Lucky, Crit Hit and Exposed Chance, sure, that's really a nice one. <coughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of drainage going on. Uh, mental Discipline, Res, Psychotic and Confused, Placate, nah, uh, not really worth it for me. Radiation and Toxic, da toxic Damage Resistances. I really don't need the resistances. I'm a brand new character. Peak health, damage resistance bonus and hit points. If you're having ta trouble surviving, peak health, yeah. Um, physical strength, if you are gonna melee stuff, if you were gonna use a bat lift, a sword, stuff like that, I am more of a rifle player, pistol player. Therefore, I'm not gonna take physical strength, but if you are a meleeer, yes, go right ahead. Pistol training, as I said, it will be giving me a pistol. I'm probably not going to use the pistol all that much. Resilient, physical and energy damage resistances. Again, brand new player. Not going to get into a whole lot of resistance, needing resistances. Rifle training, yes. 
because I am going to take the rifle from this mission. So there is that. Grenades, we don't have any grenades. Soldier, ranged weapon damage and crit severity. Yeah, because we're going to be doing ranged weapon damage. Strike team specialist, attacking targets gives crit chance. That's not a bad one. Stubborn, resist hold, ensnare, and placate. Not really. Sturdy, physical damage, resistance, and knockback resists. Sure footage, protection from knockback and root. Telekinesis, knockback. So, knowing what we got here, this gives a knockback, and this perception improves exposed chance and durations. I mean, they give the whole, everything that there is on them here. From... We have one trait left to go. I would either say, for myself, Strike Team Specialist, or all the way back up here at the top. Where was it? I'm looking here. Okay, no. I'm not seeing it. So we're going to go with Strike Team Specialist. And, uh, yeah, that would be what I'm going to choose for ground right now. And this should move us on to space. Space, we're going to do the same thing, even though some of these we might put right back in. Okay, now that they're all shut off, we have accurate. Increased ship weapon accuracy which is a really good one. Um, Starship particle generators and flow capacitors, if we were science-based. If I was gonna be doing gravity wells and things like that, yes, I would go with that. Beam training, I already know my ship has beams on it, has a beam on it, I do want beam training. Bulkhead technician, maximum hull hit points. Very nice to have, starting off. I'm not gonna run it. Cannon training. If I was running cannons on here, yes, I want cannon training. Crippling fire. Your critical hits reduce your target's accuracy, which means if I crit, if I have a high crit chance, my targets can't hit me as well. It's very nice later on. For now, no. Efficient captain. All power levels at low settings. Basically, weapon power setting, shield power setting, engine power setting, auxiliary power setting that one might be one that we actually use. Elusive is great for defense. It gives plus 10 defense rating. Fleet coordinator increases damage based on team size. Very good when you're doing TFOs. We're leveling. So we're not going to have a whole a big team size. Um, impact defenses specialist. Kinetic and physical resists. As I said, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of anything that get, I'm going to need resists on. You can put them on here. You can load up on resistances. That just makes you tougher to kill. So if you're having trouble surviving, add the resistances. Innocuous, threat, and crit severity. 5% five crit, five crit severity and 25% threat generation. Less generation, negative. That's very nice if I'm running with a team because if I pull a less threat, they're hitting somebody else and not me. Disruptor phase of plasma resists. More resistances. You can add them if you need to. Operative, crit chance, and crit severity. Yes, I want that. I'm a big fan of more DPS. If I, when I start playing, if I need more survivability... I'll add it. I will take these off and add in survivability if I start dying. But for now, yeah, I'm going with more damage. More resistances, anti-proton, polaron, and tetrion. Projectile damage. I know there's a torpedo on this, but torps don't fire as much as energy weapons. So I would rather have energy weapon damage. Outgoing shield healing. So if I'm hitting a heal for my, my shields... Um, this one wouldn't be bad if you use a ton of it. I'm not going to use it. Shield to that 
technician. Maximum shield hit points. That raises how much your shields are. Um, increase hull regeneration and regen. Same deal as with the shields above, only that. Thrill Seeker, fight at full impulse speed. 15 flight turn, flight and full impulse speed. In this game, speed is defense. It equals out speed, equals out defense. So I'm actually going to take the Thrill Seeker. Warp core potential and EPS subsystem power. Power transfer rate. Power transfer rate is huge. Say we're fighting something and our weapons are constantly firing. Well, our power drain for firing the weapons goes, takes our weapon power down. Well, then the next time I fire my weapons, my, my power drain that hit me has me down to 50%. So the, my weapons are only doing 50% of what they should be doing. So power transfer is a big one, and I am going to take power transfer rate. Power transfer is very good because you really need to have about 200 power transfer. As a new level character, you will not have that. We're talking 200 to 300 as a 65. You really want to have your power levels up. But now that we're done with our traits, stations, this is where your bridge officers will go as you get them. This is a way team. You will want to populate that with bridge officers that are good with ground. Different bridge officers, I can't click on one and show you, have different traits. Some are ground based, some are space based. If you're, you want your ones that have space traits up here and you want ones that have more ground traits down here. Reputations. Reputations are not available to us and they won't be for quite a while. There are stores like the summer event, the winter event. You can buy these things off the exchange, like so the winter event is coming up. And for you can go on the exchange if you have the EC, and you can pick up Targ earmuffs. You can pick up bullying candles. You can pick all this stuff up. Same with the summer event. You can go and pick up Lola Nut Favors. If that's what you want. The little emblem up here is Lobby Crystals. You can only get Lobby Crystals from opening up lockboxes. Which is a form of gambling. So, there is that. And we are done with this, I believe. I believe so. So, the next we have is our bag. Basically, it is our inventory bag. Also has your upgrade, re-engineer. This is how you upgrade items. Say we take off um, our shields. We put them in our bag. We can, whoops. We can right click and we can upgrade. These, these you cannot because they are low level and there is nothing on this character that I could actually upgrade to show you how that would work. <coughs> Next up is R&D. This is research and development. It's in this area that is grayed out because we are not 11 yet. And it uh, basically is your crafting material bag. You have assets, energy credits, EC. You get this all the time in the game. I recommend off the bat not spending any of it unless you're an older player and you know what you're doing because there are things that you're going to want to buy with EC later in the game. These are the marks for the reputation which we're not allowed to get into yet. Basically every one of these once you get it up you get the, you, these marks you use in this screen. You would choose say Omega, click on Omega and oh, open projects and you can do different things and level your reputations once you get your reputations to level six they're maxed out and you can start buying gear well you can buy gear at any given moment through them but every level you get gives you more gear that you're able to buy 
reputation gear is very good gear. I highly recommend doing your reputations. The next thing we have on this screen is fleet assets. Fleet credits you will start getting if you join a fleet for donating to the projects in that fleet to help level that fleet to as the projects in that fleet move up more gear is unlocked that you are able to get there's a lot of good fleet gear buffs and other things that you can get from a fleet fleet marks you get from running tfos and or patrols um, you can get fleet marks from doing a lot of different things but mainly uh, tfos task force operations and patrols Dilithium. Dilithium is very important in this game. Dilithium can be changed into real money, what they call Zen in this game. Well, you can change it into there. Right now, it is not really worth it in this game because the price of the Dilithium market is so high, it's not even funny. But there are also other things. When you buy from a fleet, it costs Dilithium. When you buy different things, it costs Dilithium. When you crafts items it costs dilithium everything in this game seems to cost a lot of dilithium you're only allowed to refine 8,000 a day you can refine as a newer player you can refine 8,500 a day if you go all the way to the alpha quadrant to the mine there's an extra 500 that you can refine there every day if you are a lifetime subscriber you can refine an extra 2,000 every two days, or no, sorry, an extra 1,000 every two days at the Academy. There is a guy down there that allows you to do that. And what that would give you is a total of 9,000 that you can refine per day. That's it. There is no way to get more unless they decide to raise it. Now you have a, a Dilithium store, which you can open here, up here on the mini-map, or right here. Special items and boxes. Right now, Phoenix Pack is going on, so if I had Dilithium, I could buy extra Phoenix Packs. Um, we'll get into this when we get up to the mini-map. You have the Exchange, which is the Dilithium. You can also open that through right here. But as I said, the lithium is very expensive right now. A year ago at this time, it was 240. The other day here, about a week ago before Phoenix Box opened up, it was sitting at 500. 500 is insane to buy or sell your dilithium at and buy Zen. If you want to sell Zen, say you've bought, put a whole bunch of money into the game, you want to sell Zen, you can do that through here. The history of your transactions is here. Gold press latinum, it's okay to have. You can get it through playing Dabo and other things. It's not really relevant in the game. They have not made it to where it is actually really a relevant currency. So there's kind of no point. About the only thing that people buy with it is some clothing items. And what are they? The basically a nullifier for disco balls you can buy disco balls and throw them up and force everybody in the area to dance well there's also a nullifier and most people carry nullifier so when somebody throws up a disco ball they throw up a nullifier so people don't dance uh salvage salvage is very important in this game basically what you do is say like you have we'll go back over here we have our shields. You see how it says maximum shield capacity? Well, there will be a lot more other stats on this screen where this shield is at. Well, you can re-engineer that. You usually right-click it, and it'll say re-engineer. It doesn't give us the option because this is a level zero shield, but it doesn't give us that option to do that here. And when you re-engineer, you need salvage, and you need delith refined dilithium. As I said, everything needs the lithium in this game. Now, replicator, you can replicate different items. And as you level, you will be able to replicate more items. But yeah, you can re replicate uh, hypos, all sorts of different things.
things to drink, uh, food items, um, another standard personal shield, a phaser beam pistol, standard issue. Um, these are all com uh, can't talk today. These are all commodities, and uh, commodities are very useful in uh, doffing, which is not unlockable to us until 11. But for the most part, yep. And then you have a recycle area where you, if you have right clicked and deleted something out of your bag, you can get it. You get money for that. Retrieve, say you deleted something and you go, oh no, you need it back. This is where you get it back in your replicator. This is a frequency relent modulator. If you are going to fight Borg and you are using energy-based weapons, they will adapt to them. This is where you can get frequency remodulators for your weapons. Say you're using a phaser or plasma or any other flavor of weapon. This is where you can remodulate so the Borg cannot adapt. Takes a couple of seconds, but they can't adapt every so many seconds they will adapt it'll say over adapt adapted above their head and you have to hit this again it will be in your device slots that's where it would go very useful item until you get up unless you're meleeing if you are meleeing the borg using a batleth or a sword go ahead and melee them to death there it's physical damage they cannot stop adapt to it And again, this video is going to run a little bit long, so we'll finish this up in the third segment.